Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And this video is the first in a series of lecture videos on complex numbers. Let's dive in. So we're going to start by looking at this quadratic equation. You can solve this quadratic equation by completing the square or by using the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and use completing the square since this is more fun. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. And then to complete the square, I do need to add half of 2 squared, which is 1. And that's going to give me the following. x plus 1 squared equals negative 1. Awesome. Well, maybe not so awesome. So we have a situation here. A number whose square equals negative 1. We don't have that number in the real world, so we did need to invent a new number whose square equals negative 1. And that number is called i, i for imaginary. So we're going to call this number i so that i squared becomes negative 1. In a little bit, I'm going to give you some definitions, so hopefully this will be more clear. And let's go ahead and see what this gives us x plus 1 equals i gives us x equals negative 1 plus i. But i is not the only number whose square equals negative 1. Of course, by definition, that's what it is. But if you square negative i, you also get i squared, right? Because it's negative i times negative i. So we can also set x plus 1 equal to negative i. And this gives us x equals negative 1 minus i. So you don't really know much about i maybe at this point, but you do know the solutions look like this. So this is how we can basically work with complex numbers, and that is the channel a plus bi. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at some definitions here. Definition. Z equals a plus bi is a complex number where a and b are real numbers. So that's important. We have to make sure that a and b are real real numbers. It can be fractions, it can be radicals, it can be pretty much any real number. The most important part is that i squared is equal to negative 1. So we, we define a special number whose square equals negative 1 and then we just use that to define a complex number which can be written as a plus bi and this is pretty much the standard form for a complex number. Okay? A is the real part because notice that there is no i being multiplied by a and b is the imaginary part because b is the coefficient of i okay so those definitions this is just terminology and i'm going to share with you these definitions so you get to look at it i'll share a pdf file with you as well okay great so let's look at some special scenarios what happens if a is equal to 0? So you have something like z equals a plus bi, and a is equal to 0. That basically just gets get rid of the real part, and you end up with imaginary part only. So you end up with a number like z equals bi, which is also called pure imaginary. And if b is 0, then you basically lose the imaginary and end up with a real number only. This also tells you that any real number can be written as a plus bi, where b is 0. In other words, every real number is also a complex number, which also means real numbers is a subset of complex numbers. But that's set theory. Don't worry about that right now. Just focus on the definition. So two things you need to know. a plus bi is a complex number, and i squared equals negative 1. Keep it simple, right? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other definitions, such as the conjugate. Obviously, the complex conjugates are very important, but the definition is fairly easy, and there's a good reason why it's that way. So if z equals a plus bi is our complex number, then its conjugate is a minus bi. So you just change this plus sign to a minus sign, and then you get the conjugate, and you read this as z bar. That little line is called a bar, so you read this as z bar. And when you multiply z by z bar, 
you get a plus pi multiplied by a minus pi. And from difference of two squares, if you remember, when we multiply x plus y and x minus y, we get x squared minus y squared from difference of two squares. And here, we also get difference of two squares. But since i squared is equal to negative 1, this actually gives us a sum of two squares. So far, you've probably been told that, hey, sum of two squares cannot be factored. But that's not true. In the complex world, the sum of two squares actually can be factored. Make sense? So here's one lesson that we should take away from here. The product of z and z bar is always a real number. And that's going to come up in a little bit, obviously. And that's a very important product. Make sure to remember this. So let's kind of summarize what this means. It just says z times z bar is a squared plus b squared. But what is a and b? a and b are the real and the imaginary parts of a complex number, which is written as a plus b i. Hopefully, everything is good so far. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of people are going to be willing to answer your questions. All right, great. So let's continue. So far, we learned the definition of complex numbers in the simplest form. By the way, this is in, in no way rigorous. I haven't taken disclaimer. I should have probably said that first. I haven't taken a complex analysis course, so I'm going to lightly go over complex numbers. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be like, or some people are going to be like, hey, this is not rigorous enough, so on and so forth. But I wanted to give you a brief, quick, simple introduction to complex numbers so you can start working with them. And if you're interested, you can always take complex analysis at the college level, which is going to be fun, I think. And I would like to take at some point. Anyways, so that's not the point. The product of z and z bar is always a real number. And now we're going to talk about some basic operations. Since we kind of have an idea, oh, by the way, I said a plus bi is a complex number, but we, I didn't give you any examples. So I should, I should give you some examples. Let me give you some examples. What happens if a and b are both 3? Then you get 3 plus 3i. Or it could be like 1 minus 2i, or it could be negative 7 plus i, in which case the coefficient of i, which is the imaginary part, is 1, so on and so forth. So you can write lots of examples. What about 5i? Yes, that's a pure imaginary number, or even 3 is a complex number because it is a real number. Okay, now what kind of operations can we do with complex numbers? Let's get into some fun stuff. We can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Multiplication uses distributive property, addition and subtraction. I'll tell you how, and division is kind of interesting, but we're probably going to leave those for the next video. So I'm going to do a series of lecture videos. I don't know how many, but we'll see at the end, and I'd like to kind of break it down into shorter videos. Anyways, let's take a look at some examples here. For example, if I have z sub 1 is 3 plus 4i, so this is an example. This is a complex number, and this is another complex number. And the question is, can I add them, right? What is z sub 1 plus z sub 2? Easy. You're just going to substitute 3 plus 4i plus 5 minus i. First of all, you can put them in parentheses, you know, to get used to the situation. And then, think about it, we are going to add like terms. 3 plus 5 is 8. And 4i minus 1i is 3i. And that's the answer. See, addition with complex numbers is fairly easy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the subtraction. How do you subtract complex numbers? Easy. You just subtract them or add the opposite, in other words, right? You can negate the second one and you'll get the answer. But let's go ahead and, in other words, you're basically distributing a negative one. So we can write this as 3 plus 4i minus 5 plus i, and then that's going to give me 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, 4i plus 1i is 5i, and that gives me z1 minus z2. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and look at multiplication, and we're going to leave division for the next episode. So z1 times z2. How do you multiply two complex numbers? My numbers are 3 plus 4i and 
I think the other one is 5 minus i. We're going to use distributive property like I said earlier. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times negative i is negative 3i. And I have 20i if you multiply these. And then finally, this part is very important. So be very careful about this. 4i times negative i is negative 4i squared. But i squared is negative 1. Therefore, this just turns into plus 4. Okay? So let's see how this plays out. 15. And these two gives me 17i and then plus 4. And finally, I get 19 plus 17i as the product. And this is the end of the first video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for upcoming videos. See you in the next episode. Bye.